Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. So today I'll be teaching you how to write a converting resume or CV. However you pronounce it, CV and resume, they have similarities though, but you know, to some people they call it, they believe it's the same, to some people it's different. So let's see how to write the resume. So we're talking about three things, the sections you need to include on your resume and what to do on your resume, the do's and don'ts of your resume, we're going to be talking about it. So what is a CV? The CV represents a full history of your academic credentials, so the length of the document is variable. But to me, I feel a CV, a CV contains a lot of information, it's usually used um, by researchers for in post-secondary institutions, high level research, a CV contains all those information. The length of documents for CV is usually more than that of a resume. For a resume, a resume emphasizes on your skills. It is used when applying for a position in the industry, like non-profit, public sector, and a resume should not be more than two pages with an additional page of publication or post presentation if it is highly relevant to the position you are applying to. After one year of experience, industry experience in your field, with work experience, place of education, with near or depending upon the qualification, resume is usually should not be more than, you know, two pages and it should contain all the experiences needed for your job, all the vital experience you have had in your field. Resume is usually used when you are applying in the field, you know, you study for. Um, so emphasis, a CV emphasizes on academic accomplishment. It is used when applying for positions in academia, fellowships and grants. The length depends upon the experience and includes a complete list of publications, poster presentation. A CV always begin with education, include name of advisor, dissertation, title or summary. So, in summary, I would say a CV is used to apply for, maybe if you're applying for a research work, maybe a postgraduate job, postgraduate research, a CV is what you use to apply if you want to get into the school of choice. But a resume is used when you're applying for a desired job in your field. What are the types of resume we have? We have reverse chronological resume. This is the this is required type of resume for entry level professionals. Your professional experience starts from the newest to the oldest. This is very good for those who have no gap in work history for individuals in the same field. Let's say, for example, all your years you have been working as a um, public health, maybe program officer, and that's what you have been doing for the past five years. This type of resume format is good for you. Always put your resume in a reverse chronological way. The, the functional type of resume, this, the candidate's work experience is listed here by relevance regardless of when it's took place. This can be used for professionals who had had changes at one point. You agree with me that not everybody that, you know, studied, let's say for example you had worked as a program officer and an opportunity came up for you to be a community health director. You know, this kind of functional thing is used to hide the gap, the change in um, your field, your professional field. Because you know, what you did as a program officer is different from what you are going to do as a community health director. So this one can be used to hide a gap if you change it. Even if, let's say for example, you are in public health before and you have changed nothing. You are now, everything you are doing is now um, practical. So it's now clinical. So this one can be used. You can use the functional type of resume format. The combination type of resume format, this usually includes both required and preferred work experience. This is this way, employers get to scan the preferred skills that they want in the candidate. This is good for those who have years of experience in the field but might not have certifications in this. Let's say, for example, now you are applying for a particular job and you don't have, well, I would say, you don't have specific, you know, certification for it. All you need to do is just to put all the years of experience. There are people that naturally they are good with um, working as, let's say, for example. They are good at good at working in clinical research. Maybe they have done something related to it over the years, but they have not gotten the degree. This combination type of resume format should be used. What are the common mistakes on your resume? Common common mistakes you make on your public health resume: typo, having typos in your 
work makes you look unorganized, including salary. Including salary, you say it reduces your chances of negotiation during your interview. Do not include salary on your CV. Avoid using nicknames. Do not put nicknames on your CV. Using unprofessional email address. Use your, your email address to, to contain your first name and your last name and the job position. When you are applying for a job, this is your email, your name, your last name and the job position should be used to apply for the job. How to write a professional resume. Do your research. Read the job description carefully to know the required skills needed for the job. Tailor your resume according to the position you are applying for. Let's say, for example, you are applying for a child health educator. They must have told you what are the required skills they need for a child health educator. Make sure all the skills you have, you possess, are the ones you put into your CV. Do not write outside what you need. So all you need to do is just to put the required skills they wrote in that, um, for that job, put it on your CV, then you rearrange. You don't have to lie, you understand? Choose the ones you have. You don't have you can't have what required skills for a particular job. Choose the ones you have, then put it on your CV. I can add the key points in required skills so you can use them across your CV. Format your resume. Use a clear format to make it easy for hiring managers. We all know that hiring managers have millions of CVs to come scan through. So make your job easy by formatting your CV and make it very simple and easy. And your CV should not be more than two pages, like we said, your resume rather. Include cover letter. For public health professionals, always include cover letter in your resume. Keep your resume to the maximum of two pages and always tailor your resume according to positions. Please do not use one resume for multiple positions. You're only shooting yourself in the leg. If you have to, today, you can decide you want to apply as an health educator. Tomorrow, you can decide that you want to apply as a child health educator. You know what an health educator does is different from a child health educator. One is specific, the other one is not specific. So you have to know. I'm not saying you should just change career the way you want it. You don't have to change careers. What I'm just trying to tell you is that make sure your resume goes in tandem with the position you are applying for. Do not, do not assume that the um, employer will scan what they want. Make sure the skills, the experience, tallies with the position you are applying for. How do you beat a resume bot? Because I'm sure a lot of people say, oh, I submitted my CV and I was not called back. You were not called back simply because of all these things. So I'm going to be teaching you what are the tips to beat a resume bot. Because this resume bot is what is going to scan your CV for the key tense they need for the job. And if you don't have the key tense in your job, in your CV, you are not going to be called for the interview. Use keywords and phrases relevant to job positions. Position. Use industry specific jargon. Like, let's say in public health, these are the industry, industry specific jargon we use in public health. We use more of this word workshop, conference, certified, certified health promotion specialist exam, health education, health equity, public health professionals, research. These are, you know, words we use. So you have to look out for what are the uh, specific words, specific jargon that is, that challenge with the position you are applying for. Spread it across your CV so you can have an offer for an interview. Clear format, your CV should not contain sophisticated diagram or graph. And make sure your CV are always PDF files. Submit your CV, and you can even leave it in Word files, but most of the time, computers ask you to submit your CV in PDF files. But the truth is, PDF files are not bot friendly, so try that so you can submit it as a Word document. Avoid putting important information in your header or footer. APS do not take time to scan the header or footer. Let's say, for example, now you have your name, your contact details that usually at the top of the CV. Do not put, on, put it on the header. This is like an header. If you put an information here, the APS um, resume bot will not, you know, be able to read whatever information you put here, and you're going to be looking at that. Oh. I actually put this and it is not called right they call that person. Make sure all the words you want to put is moved to the body of the um, of your resume. Let's say for example this is your sheet. Make sure you put all your details. Your details should start from here. Not your details should not start from somewhere like this. It's too close to the header. Make sure it's a bit like two paragraphs down then you put your information. So if you want to how to write your resume so I'm going to be teaching you two things. The difference between responsibilities and accomplishments. 
You know, a lot of times we write our CV as responsibilities, the things we did. We don't write our CVs as the things we achieved. Because recruiters are interested in what did you achieve at your um, in your former place of work. The experience should show your achievement. Your um, CV should be used, you should use active words in, in your CV. Let's say for example now, I want to write my CV, I write something like I attended Socrum meeting. Socrum meeting. This are like I want to say the things I did at my former place of work. Work with high school students. I recorded mother to child transition of which I did. You know, if it wasn't, this one is just stating all the things you did. This one is just responsibility. It has, it has no weight in, in the presence of a recruiter. What you should write as a professional is I send out monthly newsletters to members of Socron and also post latest research findings on Socron's social media page. This shows that you were asking, this shows that. These are the things we were able to achieve during the time you were working with your former employer. I inducted the MCA induction clubs and coordinated meetings for I2 students at least three, three times monthly. You know, in this other place where I worked with I2 students, it did not say I worked with I2 students, it just says what you did. You do, but what did you achieve when you were working with the I2 students? So you will now write that I worked with, I, I did initiated MCA clubs in secondary schools, coordinated meetings for I student at least three times monthly. That's how that it should be written. Then um, recorded mother to child transmission. You can simply write this as um, I recorded PMCC for antenatal patients for one year at Asokoro Hospital. Tell them you did it. Tell them the period of time you did it. It shows you are active. So when you are writing your CV, you should use active words. So this place, we're supposed to talk about cover letter. But let me just give you a summary because you know every resume in public health needs a cover letter. How do you write a cover letter? A cover letter introduces you by highlighting your interest, your education, your experience as they apply to the job you are applying for. Your cover letter should not be more than three to four paragraphs. You don't want to bore your employer. You don't want to bore the recruiter. So step one, that's like paragraph one. This should highlight your qualification, your reason for writing and where you found the job notification or announcement. Step two, this step two will be paragraph two. This should show your interest, background, your experience, and the need of your employer. I like your accomplishment in line with the need of the employer. State what you know about the organization. Let them know your background meets their needs. Let's say I like your accomplishments in needs of your employer. Let's say, for example, you are applying for um, a child health educator. And in your previous job, you have done something like maybe um, educating children on uh, maybe what to eat or, you know, to help them with their growth. Let's say the nutrition uh, part of um, child health. So you could write something like, okay, I was able to, you know, educate children on the nutrition, um, on what to eat, like the nutrition aspect of their health, you know, to promote their growth. You could write it simply because you are applying for maybe a job as a child health educator. You know, that that your accomplishment is it tallies with the job with the position you are applying for. State what you know about the organization because you want to go and apply for a job, you should know one or two things. State what you know about the organization, let them know your background. Let's say for example, I know that your organization is good with management of staff. And um, I know your organization recently had um, maybe um, a budget approved, a proposal approved for children, for children care in Africa. I'm just this is just um, um, a scenario, you know. So you would just say, I would looking at your recent accomplishments um, about your approval for for the funds. For the funds for your um, latest project, I would be able to do so, 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 and so. I've had experience working with children, and this meets with your needs at the moment. That's what you should write here. That's paragraph two. Tailor your cover letter to have the needs of the organization. Let them know. Let them know that these are the things they need, and you are able to provide it to them with no flaws. Step four. Use the same editing format, name, email, number as it is on your resume. Do not change anything. The name you're putting on your resume, email and phone number should go together on your cover letter. They should be the same. Do not change anything. Use correct name and title for 
of the employer. Check, check the spelling. Correct name. Do not misspell. Do not uh, use the same editing and use correct name and title of the employer. The employer's name is often on the company's website. Please do not misspell the um, employer's title or name. Proofread all your letters carefully for spelling, grammar, and punctuating errors. So today I hope you've been able to learn one or two things about CV and cover letters. Then let me tell you what are the sections you need to include on your resume. You know, we said it's seven pages. What are the sections, the key sections you need to put on your resume? First, you need your name, your contact details, your email address. Your contact details still fall under your email address. Two, your educational achievement, your, your education, your BSc, starting from the last, and the last education you got, like let's say you stopped a master's or public uh, or, or PhD. So start it from there. Then three, your CV should highlight your experience, your former work, workplace. It should highlight your position and what you were able to achieve. Number four, your CV should include your publications. What are the things you have done so far? The associations you belong to. It's very, very important in public health. So some, you know, some other, um, after some other department might not need it, but in public health especially, you need to write what are the, who are the associations, the associations, what associations do you belong to? It's very, very important to keep. It's not as if it's compulsory, but if you belong to one or two associations, simply state, okay, the association you belong to. Number five, your skills. What are your skills? What are skills? Skills are um, the um, things you can do, you know, practically, the things you can do with your hands. Like, okay, let's say, for example, I'm very good with Microsoft Word. I, my typing speed is 0 point something seconds. Um, I'm able to plan. I've been able to plan starting conferences. I'm very good at planning. Those are skills. Write it there. Say it there. Then number six, please can you put your reference. Your reference is very, very important. Put your reference. Your reference is important. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you've been able to learn one or two things in this um, session. So if you are new to our channel, please kindly subscribe and click on the notification button. I hope you've been able to learn. Thank you so much and have a blessed day.